Good morning, traders, and welcome to the book map live trading webinar with Scott Pulsini. All right, so it's Thursday, so Scott's on. Uh, he's going to go over uh, futures uh, live here in book map uh, and uh, look at the uh, the futures markets and take live positions. All right, so a little bit of the um, a description about uh you know this room and, and what we do if, for those of you who are new in here uh, this is the advanced education uh, it typically has been with the global plus subscribers only um, we've you know over the holidays opened up our, our discord chat room and we've been offering it for free uh, uh, trying things out testing things out and we've continued so far uh, just uh, it's going well uh, I kind of like the engagement here so we've continued with it um, and uh, let me just talk a little bit about the education uh, that you get with Bookmap. So when you subscribe to Bookmap, you get access to the educational course. It's online. If you haven't watched it, go and watch it, please. I highly suggest it um, because we go through the same concepts in, in here all the time. Uh, instead of trying to answer your questions or be um, confused about what we're covering, uh, get the answer from the course watch the course it provides the foundation then we have the daily advanced webinars that are in here three days a week uh, Monday Tuesday and Friday and we go over that course content but in the live market so you can apply directly what you've learned from the course in the live market um, and uh, it's a, a very good way of uh, learning uh, order flow and uh, and, and trading uh, so uh, we always got the uh, suggestion though like well why don't you um, uh, you know talk more about uh, trading strategies uh, and trade management well we do uh, however uh, we decided to um, uh, contact a few different traders we have J trader a stocks trader Scott Pulsini a futures trader uh, they will take live positions uh, they will go through their very specific ways of trading okay book map is not a trading strategy it is a platform uh, each individual trader has their own way of trading so we're offering everything here in the education when you subscribe to bookmap and pretty nice offering I um, you know uh, uh, challenge you uh, go out there uh, and and take a look around and see if anyone else is offering anything like this and I, I have not seen it uh, especially for free um, if, if they do offer education it's likely going to cost you hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars, and uh, they're not going to spend time with you like this. Uh, it, it will not be, it'll be, you know, documents that are static, and it's like, yeah, here's your trading strategies uh, with a, you know, a, a slew of uh, PDFs or something. All right, so uh, I think it's pretty unique. I think it's pretty robust in here from what I've seen uh, out there on the web. All right, so let's talk about Scott, uh, and, uh, you know, he'll be, taking these live positions you guys know who he is if you don't uh, ask uh, because uh, he's got a great uh, backstory here uh, and uh, you know now uh, trading uh, uh, futures uh, back again after uh, trading like what was it 10% of the S&P e-mini um, uh, you know about 20 years ago uh, so uh, uh, anyway he's got uh, just um, uh, huge depth and experience in trading here we're very pleased to have him here uh, he does offer uh, mentoring uh, services so uh, if you're interested in that I have the contact information here I will be placing this into the uh, book map uh, chat uh, in um, this advanced webinar chat and go in um, uh, in discord all right so uh, you have his email his, his Twitter his website his trading room he does have a, a trading room uh, he offers educational courses on um, the book map marketplace that provides the foundation for what he's going to cover today uh, he also has a trade copier service. You'll have to ask him for that, and you've got his email here. All right. So we got to go through the disclosures, and then let me turn it over to Scott. Uh, this is important, though, so please listen. The um, disclosures, what you're getting involved into here, uh, this is not a trade copier service room. Uh, it is to learn from the trader their specific ways of looking at the market uh, and uh, uh, watching it play out. All right. So uh, uh, this uh, is only for educational purposes. So all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific uh, investment nor advice nor recommendations. 
live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. The risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, with that said, uh, take it away, Scott. And um, uh, I think you're in here, right? Yes, I see you in there. Can you hear me? Yes. So I'm going to take my screen off and then I'm going to share your screen as well. So uh, the reason being here, let me just uh, get this in, um, uh, Scott, when you share your screen. Um, the uh, uh, I'm going to rebroadcast it um, so that, uh, hold on a minute here, let me get access to it. Yikes. Hold on, guys. I'm still kind of all thumbs here. Um, shoot. Why isn't it showing up here? Hold on. Oh, I got it. I got it. Okay. NQ Ice Iceberg Cell NQ 153 contracts. Hold on, sorry guys, sorry. I, I've got this, almost got this down. Don't worry, the market's will wait. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, so now, now you've got, you should see two broadcasts now. Um, so what this means is um, uh, if you don't see, if you can't access uh, Scott's uh, streaming screen there, you can access mine. It should be exactly the same here. All right. So uh, uh, that way, you know, there's a limit on uh, uh, how many, you know, uh, Discord uh, offers here. Uh, but uh, now we've doubled that since I'm rebroadcasting it. All right. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for the patience. No problem. How, how are you feeling? Uh, much, much better. I actually even went and worked out this morning, so that's uh, wow. got got my wind back. Excellent. So that's huge. Excellent. Um, all right, so <clears throat> I'm currently short in NASDAQ, and I may add to this depending on this new setup right here. We'll go over all this here in a second. I just want to get the stop in. Um, I, so I'm going to trail the stop based on this new setup on this short. ATR is currently 25 points, um, so I'm going to stop out three quarters of, a, of an ATR above this zone, which puts me at about 1875, 19 points above here. So I will stop out. If it goes, let's see, we're at, uh, we're at 50, so it's at 27 and a half. So I will get out at 27 and a half um, for a small, small winner, or I will add to this trade and we'll go over what I'm doing here. Um, <clears throat> I probably want to add to this trade aggressively and we'll go over why. Um, so there's two ways to play these zones. We talk about it all the time. Uh, you know, you play, actually, yeah, stop talking and put the, put the trade on first. Um, so what did I say? 19 points was an ATR. So. one basically that's right about there I'm just adding to this trade here possibly if this comes back down here I will add um, another position based on the setup so I'm gonna go over all this I just want to get this situated because Nasdaq's obviously a little volatile so I'll make sure I'm uh, trading this correctly um, <clears throat> Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'll just put on one there. Just We'll go over why, but this is my first target. Um, 
Again, we'll go over why, but this is close to, um, I'm a, I use these uh, Ludwig levels. They are extremely powerful. Um, I've just started recently using them in a whole other context. Uh, again, we'll go over that too. But anyway, my first target here is the yellow lug. This is what she calls a directional lug. <clears throat> so I want to see this should make it down to this. This is my first target. Um, but that's why I'm not adding a ton. I'm not adding full size here, just because this is this could easily bounce off here. So the risk reward to, to add to this trade on this new setup isn't worth it, in my opinion. Um, so I just put on one more. But I, I'm going to watch very intently as we come down to this yellow lug at uh, 66.75. We're almost there right now. You can see I already have my order in there. Um, it's a little bit above there. But, so we'll see if I can fill on that. <clears throat> I have three on now, so I got to cover this. Uh, the other market I'm short is ES. Uh, just purely based on the setup, there was, as you can see here, sell ice. It's this zone here. Never got an ATR above here. I entered this aggressively. Again, there's two ways to, to enter these trades. There's two ways I enter these trades. One, it's aggressively a half ATR, three, I go three quarters of an ATR out of the zone. Um, you can go half too, but many times you get ticked to the exact tick. These algos like just know the half ATR and then they'll run it back in your face. So I go three quarters in ATR. So ATR at the time was four. So I three points below the zone. I just shorted it. Um, and I'm going to show you why I was aggressive with this. Uh, the other way to play this is wait for a full ATR, wait for retest, wait for failure. The problem with this is this is about SMPI by ES 911 contracts. Actually, I'm getting out of, uh, half of these right here. SMPI Cypher by ES. 701 contract. This is the yellow lug. Hold on one second. SNP stock stock sell ES. 829 contracts. All right, a lot going on here. I just got filled on that uh, on one of these. I'm going to take off one more actually. So I still have one on. We'll go over all the lug stuff here and why what my decision was to be aggressive and everything else here. And then I got a little video that I'm going to share with you guys that you can watch. Um, very, very informative on. I had a one-on-one -on -one with Pamela Ludwig, Ludwig last um, May, and I was not using these properly for the last about eight months. I was just using them as basic support and resistance, as you've seen on my prior webinars, but there's a whole other world um, when you can kind of judge what happened, what didn't happen, and that is what um, correlates to me being aggressive or not out of my zones. I mean, the main driver of my trading is obviously this, but when you can gauge on what's happening with the lugs, and come up with a thesis uh it's deadly so again we'll go over all that i'm just trying to get uh, situated here so i'm getting i got out of uh, half my position in es here because <clears throat> this is the yellow lug for es and we can easily bounce off here as you see um so i'll cover half of these there's actually a new setup so i'll get out of the whole thing if this setup turns bullish and i'll probably turn around and go long so let's see here you can see the, this is what we call a double whammy, I believe. This is threshold, 1,200 buy ice with 800 sell stops. So this is a double whammy. So this, in essence, is automatically a bullish setup, right? You have the dumb money puke, the stop runs, the retail trader puke into the waiting hands of the smart money. So that's this. So I will cover this entire trade here if this gets a three quarters of an ATR above here. And then I'll probably turn around and flip it. So let's see here. <clears throat> Let's get the zone drawn. Again, I use dark blue usually for the uh, for the double whammies. Again, I have well, this is now six. We've added one, six distinct setups. That's what I trade off of off the SI indicator. There's a course on my website. You can get it. It's well worth the cost. I don't think it's going to cost a lot at all comparatively to these other educators that are charging five, ten thousand dollars for nonsense. But anyway, it gives you a foundation of understanding how to trade these, these zones. So what I'm going to do here, if this breaks, I'm going to short this thing, and I'm going to short it aggressively because we'll be below the yellow lug, as she calls the directional line. We'll go over a little bit, and once this settles down a little bit, we'll go over the, th the theories behind the lugs. Um, but if this pops up here, three quarters of an ATR, then I'm going to just cover this trade, and I'm going to... I'll, I'll wait for a retest for that zone and we'll go over that too. Um, so 4.22 is the ATR. So 
three quarters of that will just say three points. <clears throat> so I will be out of this trade. If this trade's uh, 23, 23, 25, I am out of this trade, and that's actually right above the spot gamma level, which I'm fine with. So that'll basically be a scratch because I got in at 24. So it'll be a small profit. If this breaks, there's one of two ways you can trade this. Aggressively, three quarters of an ATR, or half ATR, or wait for the full ATR retest. I'll wait for the retest just because we're many, many times these markets dance around the yellow lug. Um, so it, it's really aggressive to get short there. Uh, but see, now we're down here. I can totally see this bouncing and coming back. If it does that, then I will short it. Uh, if not, I still have something on, and I'm not going to be complaining the whole webinar that I don't have anything on. So that was the whole point. I got out of half at the, at the yellow lug. We have a new setup here. This goes four, four and a quarter points below here. Retest fail. I will add to this trade as a brand new trade, and the stop will go in the same exact spot that my stops are currently. So the bottom of this zone is uh, 47, 17, three quarters. So we need four, four and a quarter points below here. That's the five minute ATR, actually four and a half now. So we need to go to 1375, 13 quarter would be a full ATR. So I need to see that, 13 quarter. Then I need to see a retest. Then I need to see a failure and I will add a brand new trade on short, <clears throat> full size. It has nothing to do with this trade here. This trade's already on. So my ultimate goal, if this can't hold this yellow lug and can't pop uh, back above it, these are the two areas. I, you know, obviously I, this isn't much of a profit, but you got to watch this. This is one of the one I call baby lug. But the main target is she calls these the majors. So this is uh, big blue and big red. These are the main drivers of of the lugs as far as targets. You can see right here. This is exactly where we touched. I got a volume signal, and we'll go over this a little more in depth. And that's where I shorted it. And now. I got out of some here. It actually blew right through there. I'm going to get out of one here because I'm expecting this to bounce off the baby lug and come back and retest the zone. Hold on a second. Um, again, if it doesn't, then it doesn't. Sometimes, 80% of the time, it will retest it if this just keeps going. Yeah, I got a whopping one lot on, but it's still a decent profit. And actually, let's. I want to ignore my NASDAQ trade. So this is still rolling. kind of wish I would have put on full size on that second setup. All right, so the blue lug here in NASDAQ is way down here, right? So now that we have got through the directional yellow, I am taking shorts and I'll take them aggressively. I'll add to this trade and this is my ultimate uh, goal. And I know you guys are like, what the, that's like, you know, what's, what's the price, 15,747. That's another 100 points down. Trust me, we've caught multiple of these in my room, my trade room the last few days where it, it just is such a, a mental, um, I can't think of the word, but where you're not like panicking like, Oh my God! Well, should I get out of here? I don't want to give this back. Blah blah blah. You once you learn these how these Ludwig levels should perform, and then you use it with your volume setups. You sit in the trade until unless I get something bullish come in on the on the SI indicator to get me out of this trade. I will sit in this trade, and you will, you will be amazed. This thing will probably go right to this luck, and then I'll turn around and possibly flip it. Um, so again, let's. Uh, if I get something bullish, I will get out of this. <clears throat> If not, I'm holding it and possibly adding. So let's go back to the beginning now. This is going to slow down. Let's see what's happening here. If we got an ATR. Okay, so here, here's the routine, right? This is 80% of the time. ATR, waiting for a retest, wait for a fail. I will add a brand new position on here to my whopping one lot. <clears throat> So when, when you're looking for a retest, you know, you want to see a retest of the zone, the bottom of the zone. I keep flipping colors here. But, you know, if you get with one, one or two ticks, you can still consider that a retest. Don't, meaning don't pass on the trade if it only gets to within two ticks and starts to run away from you, right? So we'll give this a second. That did not get within two ticks. So we'll see if this retests. But you can see where we bounced, and this is exactly where I got out of another one down there. We bounced off the baby lug. 
right there. I'm telling you guys, these things are absolutely incredible. When you can understand what it should do, what it shouldn't do, and then use them for targets, and then you layer in the most important factor, which is the real-time volume, the book map SI indicator volume, I mean, it is just, it's deadly. So when we bounced off here, and I'm looking for that retest of that zone, it might even actually get up to this yellow lug, which is still gonna be part of that zone, and then I'm looking for that, and then I'm looking for this. <clears throat> so this is what I mean about understanding the lugs and what should happen, what shouldn't happen, right? So right now, because we just blew right through this yellow lug, again, the yellow is the directional, right? So in general terms, above the yellow, you wanna be looking for longs, below the yellow, you wanna be looking for shorts. So what should happen here? Well, this blew through here, this should probably dance around and it should get now to this slug. If something bullish comes in on the real-time volume, that's telling me something's wrong, right? And now that's gonna form my next thesis for my next trade. So if I see something, if I hear big buy eyes come in here and this thing rips back above the yellow, then I'm gonna turn around and go long because there should be no bullish setups as far as what is happening with these lugs, this shouldn't make it right down to here. If there's a bullish setup, that tells me, okay, something's wrong, get ready to, to go the other way, right? So that is that is what I've been missing in these lugs for the last, we call them lugs, because I don't want to say Ludwig levels 45 times in a webinar, so we call them lugs, right? So the way we, you've seen these in every webinar I've done, but the way we've used these, and it's still very powerful, is playing the reds and the blues especially when you get extreme standard deviation of VWAP, right? Like this one down here was, um, here's VWAP, it popped below there in Juno loves, but it held and then went. Uh, I was using it in the most basic sense. And then I went back and I watched, uh, I had a one-on-one -on -one with Pamela Ludwig where she started to explain like how she trades these. And again, she doesn't, she didn't have the book map volume. Now she's in my room and she's, she's incorporating the volume, I'm assuming. And she watches all the webinars, so I'm hoping she does. But she was just trading these based on, um, again, what should happen, what shouldn't happen, things like this. So if you, if like for instance, like we came up here and we and we built new lugs, right? We broke through the red and built new lugs. Well, that's bullish as long as it holds the directional. So the way you can look at this is, so say if you're trading this, I think this was overnight, but <clears throat> yeah, it was overnight. So say you're trading this and you see new lugs built and you get your SI indicator set up right here, that's bullish, that's go time, and here's your target. Boom, that's a, you know, that's a 16 point trade right there. But what I did, and we'll go over this, we came up here, there was that ice, I already showed you that. We, we tagged the red lug, we got back below that ice. I was aggressive because I know how powerful these are for sport resistance until they break, and this one didn't, and we broke below the real-time setup, and that's why I got short, All right? So what I'm gonna do here is, um, I have this webinar, uh, let's see. You guys can go in and watch this webinar. It is absolutely, it's not technical at all. I'm not a technical trader. I keep it as simple, dumb, simple, stupid as possible, right? That's my whole, again, when I made million, I don't know, sorry, hold on one second. When I made the millions of dollars, all I did was trade off of this. It doesn't get much simpler. So here's your retest of the zone, by the way. So now I'm gonna go three three points below here and I will add to this trade, brand new, brand new position. So we're gonna go uh, 1375. I'm sorry, yeah, 1475, that's three points. It's, it's about it, three quarters of an ATR. And then I will add to that trade, and I'm looking for 02 or 03, wherever that blue lug was. Uh, one second here. <clears throat> All right. Um, so anyway, when I went back and watched the video on Sunday, I was like, what have I been doing for the last eight months? Like, yes, these are incredibly powerful, just plain support and resistance. But what we, what we talk about on the webinar is what should happen, what shouldn't happen. If you don't see something happen, then it's a, then it's a trade the other way, so on and so forth. So you can imagine, like, when you, when you watch a video, you're going to see, like, how powerful it is. And then when you can add in your book map setups, when you, so for instance, like, this should have busted through, it didn't. You get a book map set up, it is just absolutely most powerful thing I've ever Soy seen. Be nice for so what I'm going to do Under here Congress. is I will post... This in the, I think this is the right room. You guys should have access to that. Um, watch it, learn it. And then if you go to her website, uh, she offers a three-day trial for the lugs, Ludwig levels. Um, just put in there, you'll remember the webinar, and I think she's offering something. I got filled on this new position, by the way, so my, 
I'm going to increase my stops. Actually, that's fine. I'm all over the place here. What's going on? Um, anyway, go to our website, put in, you know, there's a three, free three-day trial. There's a little note box below there. Say you remember the webinar and she's offering something. If you remember my room, there's a lot more perks for the love with levels. But if you know, if you're not going to be part of my room, you can still get them and get some kind of deals. So um, once you watch the webinar, you're going to see what I'm talking about. It's pretty damn incredible. <clears throat> All right. So now we are short this and hoping we can get through this baby lug. And this is my target, 0350. Again, if something bullish comes in, I'm changing my tune with bullish meaning this is the advantage, right? People that, that trade lugs, they're just sitting here hoping it busts through here and gets down here. Well, if I, with my knowledge and, and the information, the incredible information you have with the SI indicator, if you see buy ice coming right here, you're like, okay, that's not right. There if should not be any buy ice. This thing should shoot right down here. Okay, now I'm ready to, to change my tune, especially if it gets back above the yellow, then we're probably coming back here. Right, so that's how what I mean oh, by what should happen, what shouldn't happen. So as of right now, this should still make it down here. We haven't heard anything. I'm fine with sitting in the trade. And this is what helps you sit in the trade. You're like, okay, I'm not hearing anything. You know, we're below the yellow. We blew right through it. I'm expecting this. They can algo me for two hours. I don't care. I'm expecting this. Unless we get a real-time volume setup, which is the most important thing, then you get out of the trade and possibly flip. <clears throat> so we're in that. Uh, yeah, j that's that. uh, <clears throat> just to interrupt you for a moment. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, it, just the bigger picture here. Uh, this is the way that you're trading. Uh, and it, it, very simply, <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, we talk about it in the in the daily advanced webinars all the time. Look at your higher time frame levels and then look at the um, real time volume and uh, the order flow context to give you uh, insight to the potential, um, you know, high probability move. Right, exactly. You know, I use Ludwig levels. Um, I, I, I use the most minimal stuff that you can possibly use, right? I don't have 45 lines on my chart, as you guys have always heard. I use basic stuff. I use VWAP, extreme standard deviation of VWAP. They call the daily value area. I look at that, pay attention to that. Ludwig levels, which are the second most powerful thing I've seen next to book map and basically market profile. I'll, I'll keep an eye on, you know, the composites, meaning when, when areas are overlapping, days overlap, then I'll draw these zones that you see here. So this this paints a picture too, right? So what happened in the, in the morning here? Well, this is a prior, um, let's, see, let's see what this is quickly. Let's give you guys different examples. Um, you know, of, of things you can incorporate in your trading. So this was back from back, uh, what day was this? 1220, uh, no, sorry, a little bit before there. So this is multiple days that basically merge. If, again, if, if days overlap, kind of like this one, so say this one forms in, in this value area, which is 70% of the trade overlaps the prior, then I'll merge them and I draw a composite, right? So point is, what, what story did this tell you today? Well, we tried to bust out of here, did not. We got a volume signal in the SI back inside here. So even if you're not using your Ludwig levels, you could have said, okay, what should what should have happened? This should have launched out of here and gone. I should not have seen any bearish signals. Instead, NQ stop stop by NQ 153 contracts. Now this is gonna allow me to either add to this trade or get out. Because it's, you know, again, this is the main drive. This is the most important thing, the real-time volume. So you can see here, 155, that's adequate. <clears throat> I use 150 now as my threshold. If you guys bought my course, I, I had like 120. I changed it to, to 150. Um, 120 is too low. And then you also have to judge, too. Again, if you see 200 fire off 12 times in a day, you need to up your threshold for the day. That's just trading, right? I mean... The, the thresholds are good 90% of the time, but there's some days, just like some days are more volatile than others, there's some days these thresholds, you need to use some common sense and say, you know what, I'm not gonna trade 150 today. I've seen 214 times I'm, I'm up in my threshold for the day, right? You gotta use some judgment. All right, so there's our zone. Uh, ATR is 26 points. So I'm going to get out of this at three quarters of an ATR. So that's uh, 13 and a half of 13. So about 20 points. So I'm going to stop out of this at 93.75. Put this pass back up here. And then I will 
I will reassess. I'm not going to go long aggressively on this on this trade if I get stopped out based on this setup. I, w I will go long if it does this, right? So again, aggressively is three quarters of an ATR get in. Conservative is wait for a full ATR, which is again, 26 points. Wait for your retest, wait for your fail, and then get in. That's what I'll do if I get stopped out. I'll wait for a full ATR retest, and then I will flip and go long. Why? Because of the story this is telling me right now. Remember, the yellow lugs are the directional, the directional lugs, right? <clears throat> So meaning you want to be you want to be leaning long above and you want to be leaning short below. So if this pops back above here, that again these markets tend to a lot of times dance around the yellow lug too, where it's kind of whipsaw. So that's why I'll be conservative with this entry. So say it comes up and it stops me out. There's that there's that stop run. I'll wait for a retest failure just because of where we're at. If we were at in major lugs, I would get in aggressively regardless. So if we do come down here, which I think we're going to, unless something occurred like right now, and this is already ripping down. Actually, I can add to this too. Hold on a second. This is poor caddy on my part. I should have been ready to add to this. Uh, all right, so I missed the add here. This was uh, 63, three quarters in the What did I say was... Uh, Basically 20 points, so I should have been at 43, and I missed it. That's not cool. And there you go. It's already 20 points in my favor. Alrighty, so I should have another two on based on, again, I, I want to be aggressive below the yellow lug, right? Because it's showing me bearish. I would, I was going to get in here at 43 aggressively, and I'm chirping because I'm on the webinar and I missed this ad, but it's fine because I'm short the ES as well, I think, with that ad. So it'd be nice to supervise ES. 201 contracts. All right, so <clears throat> that's yeah, that's NASDAQ again. If I get a chance, we'll check out what soybeans is doing. But uh, why can't I find my damn ES chart? There we go. All right, so now what am I expecting? I mean, this is, guys, this is exactly what happens all day, every day in all these markets. This is absolutely perfect did pop above here i shocked i didn't get stopped out to the tick but so where are we at here i may take off one just because we're still dancing at this at this baby lug i'll give it a chance this pops up a little more i'll get out of um, two of them because it's just having a hard time getting through the baby lug you don't want to see that i mean i'm not getting a volume signal yet so if this comes back up here i got out of i'll get out of two of these and i'll hold three of them um but i'm fully expecting unless something bullish comes in i'm expecting this target oh three half this would be very nice if this can get below here if i get another signal i'll add if i get another signal i'll add right all right any questions bruce i know i'm kind of all over the place but stuff's whipping around here so yeah, no, it's it's great. I mean, like a uh, great price action here for sure. Um, yeah, uh, rabbits asking about uh, baby lug lug wig levels. If maybe you want to describe that again, I think it's quite cute. <laughs> Thanks. I try I try to use some comedy in my trading. If not, I'll be putting in the bin. These are the major lugs. They call she calls them big red, big blue. These are what I call baby lugs and usually there's one up here too sometimes they overlap so like this was a very powerful lug because you had a baby lug over on top of the red lug here so it was like one of these it's usually about right here and on this in this instance it was up in here so i call it the, the the minor minor lug she calls them minors i call them babies uh and then you got the majors the majors are the red and the blue those are the main and this is what i've been trading off of for months and they're still really really powerful but i wasn't taking into consideration what you know what if something didn't happen if something did happen to come up with a better thesis right and that's the key again watch the video and you'll see exactly I'm, it's very straightforward there's nothing technical about it i ask her very simple questions and it is eye-opening to, to put it mildly all right um this is kind of upsetting i should have actually i should have three positions on if you remember up here 
so this is this is a month making day trade that I kind of screwed up a little bit where I should have been adding. So let's let's go back to the very beginning, all right? Just to show you guys. So we came up here. There's your main driver stop run, right? Buy stops. Okay. Well, that means it's kind of fake buying, right? It's still buying, but it, is that someone? Is this a big, a big firm or a big player getting long? No, it's someone puking out their position. That that doesn't signify buying real buying to me, right? So we have two types. I have two, two I subs. For buy, yes. Seven hundred one contract. Come back to this because I might be out of this trade if this not mine. I will be out of this trade if this ends up holding. All right, so I got stopped out of that one. This baby lug is holding. You can see this buy ice coming in. So this this is exactly what I'm talking about. You should not see a bullish SI indicator set up in this situation. If you do, something's amiss, and it's time to start to look for longs, right? Because we should fall down to this that blue lug that I showed you. So let's see what the size is here. It's not threshold is the problem. So I go 700 for ES, so I'll just continue to hold this. But <clears throat> today, this isn't bad. I mean, it's, it's you know, I usually go above, you know, if it was like 650, 675, I would draw a zone. This is pretty low. Um, so I'll just, I'll just hold on to this and stop out of my normal spot. But if I see some big ice come in, something's wrong on the short side, I'm ready to get out of the trade and then go long. But as of right now, I'm still on this. So anyway, back to the NASDAQ, the reason I got short here, let's actually go back to the lugs, because I was already basing my, my thesis on what should happen, right? So we came up here, and this is, what, if you watch the video, this is the one of the first things she talks about, where markets should, once you get above the directional, it should tag the other lug. If it doesn't, that is telling you something right there, right? Doesn't mean it can't do this and then do this and then tag it. But that's the benefit, the power of having the real-time volume signals. So if you're just trading lugs, you're like, uh, I don't know here. Um, we could come back or we could sell. I, I don't know what to do here. Well, when you throw in your the most important factor, the real-time volume, you're like, well, let's see here. We didn't get to the lug. And then looky, looky, this is a bearish setup, a dumb and dumber, right? So this is why when you incorporate this with the lugs, it's the most powerful thing I've ever seen, right? So this is why I got short. Let's see if you can see the entry here. So that was a dumb and dumber. We even got a retest. I actually waited for a retest. Oh, I think I waited for a retest, I can't remember. You can see my original stop up here. I did an ATR above here, I can delete that. There, there's my, yeah, and I got in here aggressively because we are so close to the red lug, you shouldn't be seeing bearish setups. I got in aggressively. That was my first entry. Yes, it's on its way to 03. Open, as long as something doesn't come in. Um, then we got, this is when we were on. I did add to this, didn't I? I can't, I can't remember. Like this. And I added... Oh, no, I got out of one. I can't remember what I just did right here. We were on the webinar, but I can't remember. Um, so anyway, this was a brand new setup, though. Look at that. I mean, look, this, guys, this is just over and over and over. Even if you're like, I don't want to be aggressive. I want to wait for a full ATR retest. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. That should have been position number two. Then, and then you just put your stop where it is right here, right? Put it at three quarters of an ATR above there. We went over this. I thought there was another one in here. So I should have two positions on. I thought there was three setups in here. Oh yeah, there was. So this this was this one. That was a sell ice. That's why it's black. That was that. That was aggressive. It didn't retest that zone, but I, I already said we were blown through the yellow log. I want to be aggressive. So I should have had another position on there. And then you get this one. And then you, I should have three positions on instead of a whopping one lot. But it's still a nice trade. But this is a month make. This is what I'm talking about, guys. You wait and you, you, you battle every day and you break even. You lose a little, make a little. And then you catch a day like today where you just get set up, set up, set up. And you just keep adding and trailing your stop based on the setup, based on, you know, if you're using the lugs and that philosophy. And then you, this should, I should have three positions. This should be like up 10 grand right now. 
but it is what it is. Again, it's harder for me to do, keep track of everything on these webinars, but you guys get the gist of it. <clears throat> so I'm still short that. So you guess is pulling its whole nonsense. So nothing is violated, right? Like, like I mean, lug-wise, right? We're not, I haven't got it set up. All this is doing, this, this is what I mean. Like, if you understand what should happen, you're not panicking when it's just dancing around this baby lug, right? Could it come? It could even come back up to this yellow lug, right? And then, and then do that. As long as I don't get a brand new, a new volume signal, they can dance all they want. If we get above here, then I'll stop out and then I'll reassess. But don't let these algos screw with your head. You, if, you know, especially if you're using these lugs, you're like, okay, this is where we should go. If I don't see anything, they can play games. It doesn't mean it can't do this. If it does, and then it gets above here, then I'll change my tune. I'll stop out. I'll make a little bit, change my tune. But that hasn't happened. So until you see a volume setup, you sit in this trade and let them play games and watch the flush down to there. <clears throat> All right. Um, what's going on here? What's this happening? Can you use the not logs? They're lugs. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes, here. We'll go. We'll go through all of these real quick. Just so you can kind of see where we're at in each one, right? So. I'll give you just a quick synopsis. Again, I've just started using these as far as thesis wise and what should happen, what should happen. So uh, again, like watch the video and you understand. So here we go. That's my expectation. So anyway, we talked about it. Tag the red lug, got a volume signal, blew right through the yellow, tag the yellow. This we should get here, if not lower. This could come higher, bust bust this and and build new lugs too. And we'll base we'll judge that based on what's happened, what happens with the volume down here. So that's that we looked at MQ. Here's Russell. Same thing. What do you see here? These lugs are monstrous. Again, the longer they form, the bigger they move out of here. You can see how long these things have been going on. So what do you see here? Well, we came up, we tried to we tried to hold above here and right through it. Now this is bearish. So any bearish setup I would get in here, I would be I would enter aggressively, meaning I wouldn't even wait for an ATR retest. I would just get in three quarters of ATR. These are the targets. Baby lug, blue lug. Crude. Same thing. What do you see here? This thing cannot hold above. She calls this the directional. Can't hold above the directional. We're back below here. If I get a short setup, I'm taking it. This is my target. Baby lug. Blue, blue lug's the main target. You want you can get out of one, you know, some of them at the babies, but the, the big, the majors or big, big blue, big red. That's that's the key. Gold. What what do you see here? So you had this. Try to stay above the yellow. Nope. Try it again. Nope. Got through it. Nope. Retested. Yep. And then as soon as you get, if you get a bear, a bear, bear signal here, you are it's go time. You're like blue lug. Now we got here, and what do we just do? We built new lugs. This is really important too. Again, we, she talks about this first thing on the webinar. When you build new lugs, the expectation is you don't want to see, so here's the yellow, here's the prior red. You don't want to see this thing get above here. If you do, something's wrong, and then you start looking for longs again. But right now, this is showing me, just based on thesis-wise, this should hold and come down to this next lug. If I get a short signal, I will be shorting this with glee, with happiness. Right? If this turns around and pops back above this prior blue and the yellow, and I get a bullish signal, I will go along with happiness. And these are my, that's my first target, or my main target, is the red lug. I'm not going to do bonds, I'm not going to do, uh, I mean, the same, guys, it's the same stuff with the SI setups, and it's the same stuff with the lugs. It doesn't matter what market you're trading, it's the same principles. I don't know her proprietary formula. It's incredible. China, I'm assuming she uses something with VWAP, market profile. I, I don't know all her inputs, but she's been around for like 12 years and she's got a a lot of users that have been that are profitable. So again, profitable just using the lugs. Could you imagine how well you could do using this volume information? Like it's the sky's the limit. All right. So this is what I mean about like you know, how many guys just not under that don't have this kind of information. You know, or like just panicked out of that. Again, it doesn't mean it's not going to come back to the yellow. And if it does, something's wrong with, with the short, and then I'm looking for longs. But 
It's like it popped up. You're just like, okay, it's just dancing around the baby look. I'm still expecting this. Again, if this pops up and I get a bullish signal, then I'll change my mind, but nothing's happened. So I'm sitting in this trade and I'm not worried about it. I'm not watching every tick. The trade's on. Let it work. Natural gas. See here. It's just it's just pretty incredible here. Built new lugs. Up below the prior blue. Couldn't hold above the yellow. Boom. Test. Gone. Blue lug. It's like clockwork. Silver. Built new lugs. Held the prior red. Held the yellow. Great long. Test. Test. Tag the red. Now we're below here. What do you, where do you think we should be going? We should be going here, right? So if you get a bearish setup, you're like, I'm in, I'm in aggressively because this is where we're going because it blew right through the shell. If you get a bullish setup and we get back above here, then you're like, something's wrong. I can't wait to go long, right? Beans, <coughs> important area. So what do you see here? And this is another thing she talks about. So once we got above the directional yellow, you expect it to tag the red. This is kind of like the NASDAQ. This is the NASDAQ trade earlier. Remember, it didn't tag the red. And, I'm like, and then I got my volume signal. I'm like, I'm short. It didn't get up here, get my bearish signal. I'm short. Mm -hmm. So this, this came up here and didn't tag it. Danced around. The minute this gets below this yellow, you're saying, okay, blue's my next stop because of what didn't happen up here. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Like it's also what didn't happen, not just what happened. It didn't tag the red. Once we get below here, go time, there's your blue. Now it's kind of dancing right at this blue. We could build new lugs, and then you have a whole new thesis and setup, right? So if we build new lugs here, and you get yellow, red, blue, well, this should stay below here, and you should see a bearish setup. And if you do, then we're coming to the next lug. If for some reason you get a bullish setup and it pops up here, you're like, okay, something's wrong. This should have done this. And again, what should have happened? Now I want to get long, and then that's going to be your target. Wheat. Here's a perfect example. This one already broke. The beans is about to break. Right? Here's your yellow. So that when you build new lugs, you're expecting that. And this is holding true. As long as it doesn't get above, I mean, it could dance around here. If you get above this blue and then get a bullish signal, then you're coming up here. But until then, you're looking for shorts. So if I get a short signal, I am in. And I'm with, this is my main target. Uh, the rest of these I don't even I haven't even updated. I don't, I don't follow the, the all these other. I, I got enough on my plate, uh, especially corn. Corn's a pain in my. You know what? All right. Any questions, Bruce? A lot of chirping today. Yeah, just a minute here. Let's take a look. Um. So uh, the lug wig levels. Um. Uh, still available only on CR charts? No, no. So she's got, she's actually adding them because her, her base is actually growing because of, you know, the exposure she's getting from me alone, I'm assuming. But uh, she has, I, I use Sierra chart because I, guys, I'm a retail trader too. And, and the first thing you should be doing is cutting costs, right? You don't need to be spending $900 a month on, on, software platforms why do you think i use thinkorswim and sierra thinkorswim is is free if you put your and it gives me the information i need right it's if you put some money in there you can actually pull it out and you still have access to, to your charts that this is all i need why do i need more than this why do i need to pay anything i don't that's why i cut cost here sierra chart is 35 bucks a month and it, you know you need the data feed but if you have like a rhythmic you, you have two connections and you can do stop, stop sell and q 171 contracts all right now i'll come back to this here uh but the, she does them for ninja trader she has them for a couple other ones and she's adding them and if you want something she's very very accommodating you say hey, can we get them on this she's in the middle of updating all this uh, like sierra charts is a major pain in the ass because it's so labor intensive so that takes a lot of her time but she will definitely add something if you want to add it all right so i don't see this is close this is 130 stop run 25 that's not enough for me to draw this but you see the snakes here and qi size for by nq 151 contracts right, here we go now i'm going to trail the stop minimum and sweeps not snakes bruce doesn't like when i say snakes see how this ice is coming in here now you shouldn't see a bullish setup if this is going to make it to the to the blue lug 
right? If you see a bullish setup, you're like, okay, that's not making it a blue lug, I'm going long. Right? This is why the real-time volume is so important. Once again, I can add to this too. It's getting a little scary for me to add this after this kind of move, but I will. This is a double whammy, right? Actually, no, it wasn't. It was just a bias. We'll just make this blue. All right, there you go. All right, so let's see where we are with the lugs. Crap, we're already down to three in that. Thanks for telling me, Bruce. Right off the blue log here. Gold stocks, GC, 214 contracts. All right, so I'm out of two of those just because I want to see what happens now with this lug. The lugs are that powerful, right? Man, that was quick. Do you see what I'm saying, though? How you not, you don't get scared out. You don't let the algo screw with you. It was dancing around that baby lug, and the, the objective was the blue lug. Here we are here too. So I'm getting out of this NASDAQ as well. And then I will reassess. So now if this turns bullish, if this turns into a bullish setup, I'm going long because we're bouncing off the blue lug. If this holds and we build new lugs, then I'm going to put on a brand new position on short. This should have been a this should have been about a 15 grand trade if I added like I was supposed to. I'm not going to complain. Good trades, but all right, so now we want to see if this builds new lugs. If it doesn't build, she talks about this too on the webinar. If it doesn't, if it gets below and we don't get new lugs, that's telling you something. And we already know there's a bullish setup. Then I'll be looking for at least to move back to the yellow. So Sierra is kind of a pain in the ass, part of my language, but you got to you gotta kind of refresh it. Sometimes it doesn't automatically update. Ninja Trader, I guess, is perfect. So if you guys got Ninja Trader, there's no problems. They update all the time. Um, but... All right, so we still haven't drawn lugs yet. If this pops back above here, guys, this is going to be a great long, a great flip. So what do we look for? Well, did we get an ATR below this zone? The zone's 33 points. I don't think we came close to that. We might have. Let's see. Bottom of the zone is 50, 56 quarter. Get down to 26 quarter. Yes, we did. Right, 30 points, no, 33 points, sorry, 33 points. So I said 56, so that, what's, what can I add? 26, 23. So we did not quite get to 23, pretty close. Mm -hmm. So my well, why, I'm, why I'm saying that is because you can either I don't I don't want to I don't want to put on a short here until we build new lugs. But my point is if this holds and then gets above here, then I want to go long. And it's not really it's not um, violating this setup. The setup in my in, you know the way I trade these, if we get a full ATR below here, well then this as a bullish setup is no no good. See what I'm saying? Came close, we didn't get there. If we get back above here, I'm gonna go long as it bounce off the blue lug. Let's see if we build new lugs. Nothing yet. So back to this guy. I mean, do, do you see what I'm talking about? Like how many guys got shaken out? of the, I'm sure someone on here got short with me and someone got shaken out on this, right? Oh, no, no, it's going to, oh, we're going to do this. And I don't blame you, right? Mentally, this thing does this nonsense all the time. It's still probably going to do it, right, you know, eventually. But you understand, hey, there's no volume signals. This is where we should go. And guess what? We're right there. Looks like magic, but it's not. Again, this is all premised on my original setup way up here. So that's a, I guess it's a 34 point trade. That's pretty good in some circles. In my most hidden market, I hate this market. There you go. So this is going to be telling too, if we do not build, new, if we don't come up with new lugs here and this gets back above the blue and I get a bullish signal, I am going long. I'm getting out of this. Was there a setup down here? Uh, just a, a, a quick question, Scott. Um, uh, is um, I, I, following the higher time frame uh, <coughs> levels, uh, and, and in this case, your your Ludwig levels? Um, calm lugs, calm lugs. It's okay. much easier. All right, following your lugs. Uh, <laughs> then, then um, I, I'm just um, I'm just curious, like uh, uh, your exit on on that, like um, uh, 
you know, looking at the order flow around that event, um, like the the sweep below it or something like this, um, uh, might be uh, you know something to uh, kind of confirm that level. Uh, uh, and if if that's something that, uh, uh, or you just you just exit at the level, uh, it hits it and like uh, then then you're out. Again, I you know. I'm learning the best way to use these and the best way to use the zones, whether to be aggressive, not aggressive. As far as the, the major lugs, yes, you just you want to get out of the majority and just wait and see. Because the thing is, look, I'll get out and you can see now these are these are all bouncing, right? And this, I mean, it's just it's incredible. Right, right so, but it, it does it does make sense. So there should be some sort of order flow event around that important level. Well, there's that. There you go. That's. The, listen to what you just said there should be so if there's not what is that telling you and again if you watch the video you should watch it too bruce because you like to trade obviously we talk I, this is the exact thing i talk about in the video when i first this was i was literally three days into using these lugs back in may and i told her i've noticed when we come to the major lugs if i don't see a volume setup that's usually an incredible fade right not incredible, but it, that's telling you that's telling you something. So if you don't see an event at a lug at an important level, that's possibly telling you something. So you can come up with you can come up with strategies where you you play the fade if you don't see something, right? So that's what you know, you have to determine. But I, I much obviously it's way more powerful if you see a bullish setup right here, which we may still get. That that's even more powerful. But it's something to, there's something to be said if we do come down to a major level. And you don't hear a thing, right? That's telling you, okay. Well, there's really no engagement. Well, you know. but you saw a sweep below it, right? Didn't you see the the sweep? I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, the sweep looks I, like I just did an, not see that to, you saw, but yeah, it just looks like an sweep. unbelievable way to get out. Like uh, let them sweep below right. the level, and it's like, yeah, there okay, you go, right? You can say you exactly. So I mean, the, you know, I'm giving you guys like the foundation, right? You guys can come up with this, like you said, like you you notice this sweep right here. There's a thou that's almost a thousand sweep sweeps. I call them snakes. I call this the white snake in my <laughs> room. I know Bruce loves my oh snake. god! You got black mamba. You got white snake. So this is you can say, hey, wait a minute. Okay, here's here's a sweep. Remember, white is white is buy, black is uh, sell in 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 the sweep. I'm sweeping, and, and what this is showing you the is whoever is the responsive. Um, party meaning the passive so you can see these big red bubbles someone hit the market and swept and someone took them right so that's why you see the the, the uh, white so my point is you may say okay i'm getting long on a setup or if i see a huge sweep and it can't get below there look at this boom no dice came back almost to the exact low gone right? so you guys you have all the information right and you, you can trade this stuff any way you want to trade it I tell you all the time, there's art and the science. The art is, do you want to trade this? How do you want to trade this? Do you want to wait for it? The art is, hey, do I want to get in a half ATR aggressively? Do I want to wait for a retest fail? That's the art. This is the science. Like, there's no disputing there was 200 plus icebergs here. There was no disputing there was 750 white snakes in here. There's no disputing there was another thousand sweeps in here. That, that, that's not up for discussion. It, that's what it is. How you trade them is the art. Right. So you can say, I want to see his SI setup. I don't see that. Say this didn't happen. You say, okay, wow, that's a thousand sweeps. That should have continued lower. We're at a blue lug. We're popped back up. I'm going long. I'm going to put my stop right below sweeps. Okay. And does that make yeah, sense, Bruce? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it really, I mean, it's just like a, um, just as we kind of started off, like, a, you know, here's your, here's your strategy. You've got your higher time frame levels. And then look for order flow events around those levels, uh, <coughs> and uh, that will help optimize the, the trading. So, so the event below that is, and it's a wicked event. Um, the, the the is a is a book sweep and a stop run below the um, uh, lug lug web level there, and uh, lugs, lugs, lu below lugs. the lugs, and uh, you know. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, there there it is. You know, there's your reason, um, uh, and, and you're combining. Uh, your higher time frame and your order flow or lower time frame stuff uh, that that's all i mean it's just like higher i just it just it's like you say like the real time volume is um uh telling you so much uh therefore there it well, is it's the key yeah it's it's the, it's it's what drives the markets period and if you can 
have, so once again, you guys heard me say this like 12 times in the last couple of weeks. I went the whole month of December in my room and all I traded, regardless of where we were, regardless of structure, lugs, anytime I saw a setup, I will. I waited for a full ATR, move away from there, and I waited for the retest and the failure, the conservative entry, right? That's all. That's all I did for one month, and it was profitable. It was like it was up like eleven grand or something, and that was through December too. And I was sick for a week and a half of it. But um, the the point is, you already have the edge. This, this is the edge. This stuff, what you're seeing here, is the edge. Mm-hmm. Now, when you can incorporate that with something, again, you know, I use Ludwig levels because they're incredible as you're seeing, but you may say, I, I, I like to use, I like to use structure and I like to use balance areas, right? We talk about, I use balance areas all the time and I, I keep an eye on them, right? But I mean, like what would have been your trade here? If you're looking at this as a bar chart reader, like what looks so bearish here? Nothing to me. This looked like it just basically came back to the top of this balance and then we came down to the bottom. Like this looks pretty benign to me. I'd be like, yeah, no, I'm not interested. That, that looks a lot different than the information we got here, right? Came up here, touched the red as, as resistance. We got the volume set up, there's a short, boom. We got another one, I added, and then we judged what it did at the directional. It blew right through it, it retested it, and this was the expectation. And lo and behold, boom, and then bounced right out of it. Right, so there's no there's nothing wrong with you know using the I use them all the time. I mean, you, you have to ha- you have to understand structure, but you know intraday stuff. You, if you're you're we're day traders, right? A lot of times you're not going to get sound setups, you know that are that are playable based on the higher time frame, right? So so for instance, what do you see here? So this is major balance, multi week, multi month, right? What do we do? Broke down, retested. My volume note, and, and then it paused. So that's good to know, but like that's not a, that's not really tradable from exactly. a day trading exactly. perspective. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So it's like, okay, I know this is a high volume note. Okay, I'm I'm going to short right here. Where's my stop going to be? Four hundred points away, <laughs> right? Because this is still continue. This is still bearish until we get above this high volume note. Okay, so you just throw on a short randomly here, and then you put your stop up here. I mean, yeah, if you're you know if you if you trade you know, intraday or intra week, then that's fine. Where you're saying, okay, I'm risking up to 16.2, and my my goal is to get back down to this this low. Well, then that's fine. But we're day traders, right? So this a lot of time isn't isn't practical for entries, exit, so on and so forth. So that's why the real time volume and then my lugs or the lugs are the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I, I was just I was just curious of the exit on that. Um, it was just like, oh, it's hitting a lug. I'm out. Yeah. Um, uh, and because- that's how powerful they are though. I mean, I, I because the thing is, Bruce, if, if it comes back down here, which is doing right now, and this busts through, well, it's gonna build new lugs and then I can make a new determination. Okay, you, you know, you got the yellow, you got your blue, like we just looked at soybeans or wheat, right? Then I'm looking for another volume event to make another decision, whether, hey, is this gonna hold and do this or is it gonna make the next move to the next lug? Right, so I'm I'm perfectly fine with getting out and then waiting to see. Hey, we're we going to build new lugs. Hey, is a new volume setup going to come in? And then and then reassessing and getting back in. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I just to to really optimize it. Like if you saw if you saw an order flow event around it, like you really got something. Is my my point? It's like it's like looking at a candlestick. I mean, and I'm I'm I'm. Uh, this will be my last point on it and just move move onward i, I don't want to take too much of your time here but when you look at a candlestick pattern or like a cup and uh you know handle pattern or you know a double bottom pattern like great but how do you know it's going to follow through that's where the order flow can help you not, not or, fa- or that's, fail that's or fail it. you know yeah that's, that's it. it that's exactly it exactly uh so anybody who is trading without order flow does not have all the information in this order flow. I'm not talking about, so I did the webinar yesterday. The guy that, you know, he makes money just trading low with levels. He looks at completely different things. He was saying, I don't, I don't understand book map. I use, uh, I use the footprint and Delta and stuff like that. And that's fine. If he can make money that way, I think he can 
he made a lot more money using Bookmap, and I was trying to push him that direction, like, hey, get out of my webinars, because he's a friend with Pamela Ludwig, and I'm like, and you can start to learn how to really read order flow, right? Because what he was using, he was using um, imbalances. Uh, so here, let's see if I can give you an example, which I just don't think is, I just don't think that is the, the, the way to look at these markets. Like, if you're making money using footprints, then you're going to make 10 times more using Bookmap, in my opinion. Um, let me see if I can give you an example here. Uh... Yeah, and I'm, I'm not trying to, like, like it's mention Bookmap in here and trying to sell the product. It's like, no, just seriously, like, order flow There's event around it is yeah. what it is. It's, order flow event I mean, around the level. Like, use your higher time frame levels and then use order flow. You're going to get a much higher probability uh, outcome. Right. So let, let, you know, here's some examples, right? Like, um, you know, people, I, I guarantee half the and people on here. For sell and Q, 152 contracts. Let me see what's going on here and then we'll come back to this. All right. Here's another event. It's basically smack dab in the middle of the zone. If this, see how this is 172 sell ice. If this gets above here, Um, if this gets above here, it's, I'll even mark this up just because this is the newest event and we'll make it black. So got this, you can see these sweeps, these sweeps ran right into cell ice. That's important information in itself. So you got that. And then remember you want to go, you want to incorporate all the prices till it ends, till the event ends. You got that. Let's change the colors. And I use black for cell ice. All right, so now I know, what do we know here? I'm about to cover that ES just because it's there's nothing happening down here and I'm not, I don't need to see it come all the way back to the yellow, but nothing happened. All right, so what 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 has happened here? Now look at this. Try to break below, no new lugs. Try to break below, no new lugs. Now you have your volume of that. That's what I'm expecting. I will play this aggressively out of this if this busts above. So again, if you're just playing lugs, you you're just throwing it or, or any chart pattern, you're just hap, you're just hoping. You're like, okay, we tested, we tested, couldn't couldn't build new lugs, tested again, couldn't build, all right, I'm just gonna go along. Okay, that's fine. But would it behoove you to understand the volume and say, okay, I'm not gonna go along right here because cell eyes came in. I'm not gonna just gonna go along below this if this gets above this this is going to be a broken ice setup one of my six setups and that's the trade not right here and you don't know that if you're not if you don't understand real-time volume the real-time volume this is it guys this is the big money the big money is what runs the show if you know what they're doing and you know when they're right you know when they're wrong and you understand you know again if you're using loves like okay this should if this is going to go if this is going to hold then, then if then we build new lugs and I'll change my tune and I'll go short again. But I'm expecting based on what we did at the lug three times, we couldn't get through it. The minute this gets above here, half uh, three quarters of an ATR, I am in like Flynn. 34. Yeah. So half of 34 is 17. Half of 17 is no, let's see, eight. So let's say 26 points. <clears throat> so 26 points above this latest zone, the cell ice. I am getting. I'm going long. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Just uh, I, I won't. <laughs> I'll let this go. Uh, but just look how simple and easy a trading plan can be. Like you have uh, your. Uh, let's, not, let's not say easy. <laughs> Nothing's easy about trading. Okay. Well, simple, look at yeah. how simple and simple. straightforward exactly. it can be. Like you know exactly what you're doing. You 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 started off the webinar talking about that. Like you you won't get shaken out of something because you're looking at your higher time frame. You know the behavior around there. You're looking for the order flow event around there. Now you've got something that is much, much higher probability. Right. So again, if you so here's a this is a perfect example, guys. Right? Like if you're just playing lugs, again, very, very powerful on their own. But what what do you what did you do? That held that held that you're like, I'm long. Now you're like, oh crap. Um this this isn't why is this doing this? 
well, if you have a real-time volume, you know exactly why it's doing this. Because sell ice came in and stopped this market cold. See the sweet? See the black mamba right there? The snake? Right? Stop the market cold. That's pretty pretty important information as far as I'm concerned. It's the information, right? So now, so first and foremost, if this gets a full ATR below here, below this latest zone, I, I'm canceling that long because this will negate okay, this as a possible this, long this setup, right? If I, that's the way I basic. trade it. If I get a full five-minute ATR below the zone, it's not a long setup anymore. As long as this doesn't go 33 points below here, actually, I think it already did, so I'm about to cancel this, and then I... It says, let's see. Bottom of the zone is 70. And we got down to 35. That's 35 points. That's an ATR. I'm going to cancel this. So technically, you could now play this short because here's your ATR. First of all, I wouldn't be aggressive until we built new lugs. But if you got your ATR, your retest, your fail, again, half ATR, three quarter ATR, you get in, you could short this. I don't want to do that until we build new lugs. If we build new lugs, then it's go time. And trust me, we're going to get more signals anyway. So let's see what happens here. But do you see what I'm talking about? If you're just playing lugs, you are sitting here saying, what the hell is going on? This tried, it tried, it tried. Why did it do this? Oh, you know why? Because there are cell ice that stopped it cold in its tracks. Now, wait, if this build new lug, we're coming down to the next lug. The next major lug, in my opinion, depending, right? So if we build new lugs and then something bullish comes in, then I'll flip it. So let's wait and see here. <clears throat> I feel like I've been talking for like four hours. Same with the S. Yes. Just refresh these to see what happens. Again, Sierra chart, you got to do this sometimes. They've been working great lately, but I just, I want to know, especially real time, like, hey, are, do we have new lugs yet or not? Right. Nothing doing yet. So as this setup, I, I would not go long off of this setup. Right? You could, you could still go long off this if it gets back above here. I don't. That's not how I trade. So I need to see something new to go long. As long as these lugs hold. Oh, I thought we just built new ones. As long as these lugs hold. So again, if you watch that video, she talks about. The parameters that are involved in making these, it, it tells you something. If this, if this does not build new levels and it, they can't push through it, that is telling you something very important. And then you're expecting yellow lug and then possibly red lug, at least yellow lug. Right? So I have all that information in my head, and I'm just sitting here like a sniper waiting for a volume setup. That's it. Again, simple. Not easy. Nothing is easy in trading, but it's, it's simple. And I know exactly what I want to do. I have my rules. I have my rules for my zones. I have my rules for my risk, how much I should be putting on. Again, if you remember my room, where you want to build one of these, there's your risk spreadsheet. You put in your, your account size. You should only be risking about 2% or less on a trade, one and a half, two percent And then this tells you how many, how many contracts you can put on based on what your risk is. So for instance, that ES trade, I think I, I, think I was risking maybe 11 points. So, and that's what I had on. I had a four lot on. If you're if you're not following something like this, you're gonna blow up your count. And I'm not even gonna go on that rant like I do every week. But that that right there is the most important thing you can do, period, before you even start trading and understanding this stuff. If you can't control your risk, you are going to blow out your account. It's 100 percent You might get lucky a day, a week, even a month, but trust me, it'll catch up to you if you're trading too big. If you have a ten thousand dollar account and you are trading normal size contracts. You're, you're done. You're going to blow out your account. Trust me. Unless you get lucky and go on a run, it, it, that's just that's too big of size to be trading with a $10,000 account. You need to trade micros. There's nothing wrong with trading micros. And if you trade micros, it helps you learn to like piece out of positions, add back. You know what I mean? You're not just one or done, one or nothing, right? So don't don't be like embarrassed to trade micros. Like I have one account that I trade micros on. I'm trading for another guy that I trade micros on just because the account's not big enough. You can't. That's the number one thing that I can, I can tell you. While this is just dancing around here, Bruce, do you have any idea why this Russell chart is like dimmed? I have no clue what is going on here. Why? Why is that? Yeah, like that? this is this is a new new feature. 
uh, in 7.3. So in the top top of your screen. Well, black everything out. Black everything out and just close your eyes and throw an order in. <laughs> no, uh, it's actually a really cool feature. I, I really like it. I, I requested it some years ago, and then and then we've um, uh, we got more requests and like uh, it. So no, down below that, just right there is a slider right below it. This. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know so, so you can, so oh. because, and the reason being that it's been requested recently is because we have new, indi all these new indicators on there. Um, so if you want to see more clearly, um, you can just, uh, you know, hide the heat map very quickly. Got it. Or just look at, you know, maybe uh, certain levels of liquidity and kind of make the others transparent, more transparent. Right. Um. That was a simple one. All right, I'm just going to get out of this for right now, and then I'll reassess based on lugs uh, if we build new ones. But, you know, it's stuff like that, like someone in my room pointed out yesterday, I didn't have this uh, this <laughs> data tool tip. Like, I had it like this, and it wasn't. He's like, you know, if you click on that data tool tip, it'll show you the values every time you touch anything. I'm like, oh, that's good to know after three years. I had no idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, you know, you just continue to learn stuff about this software, but it is... I don't care if you guys think I'm selling it or not, because I mean, I'm not selling it. It has nothing to do with me, but it is the most powerful thing you can possibly have in your trading. And if you don't have it, you are, you do not have all the information. I don't care. Also oh, back to, we'll go on a rant on this nonsense that I, I, I just think is nonsense, right? So many guys are trying to trade off of this uh, um, and they think they, they're seeing what they're seeing and you know, the footprint, right? It's like, yeah, there are instances where you want to use it and you want to see, hey, are there heavy sellers? Like, you know, for instance, this one work where you see, you know, guys, this is like they live or die by this. Oh, look, look at all the, wow, 1,100 sellers, meaning there were more hitting of bids and taking of offers, right? That is important information and this one happened to hold, right? But what are what are you not seeing here, Bruce? So I'm going to put you on the spot. So oh. if we come down... And, and there's 1,200 sellers. Okay, yeah, that's information. Someone's being aggressive. Well, what could you possibly not be seeing on the other side of this trade? All sorts of things. I mean, like you're, you're well, not. What's the main? What's the main one? What's the main driver of my trade? Well, yeah, icebergs. But uh, you're An just iceberg. not. You're not seeing any liquidity like, at all. Right. Well, that, that's the, it's like great. There's 1,200 sellers. Well, what if there's 4,000 buy icebergs in there? <laughs> exactly. Icebergs? Exactly. Like, I, I don't give a shit. I don't. I don't swear right there. I don't care if there's 1,200 sellers. Yeah, I want to see what it does out of this area. But you're not getting all the information with this. You're just seeing one side of it. Oh, great. There's 1,200 sellers. Oh, guess what? There was. There was. All this was an iceberg, and then there was another 4,000 behind that as we moved on. Do you think that might be important information to know than just play, playing off a footprint? Like this is not, I, I, again, you could glean some information off of it. And I know some of you guys are making money using it, but I'm telling you, you're not seeing the whole picture if you are just using a footprint. Or the Delta, like yesterday, the guy that I had on to do the Ludwig, he used this Cumula Delta. And it's just, guys, trust me, I've been doing this for 23 years. I've seen it all. I've done it all. I've tried everything. I tried footprint. I was at best, at best, a mediocre trader when I was using this information, at best. And then the minute I was introduced to this, I knew I was back. And trust me, I am on my way back, and it's going to be glorious. <clears throat> but, you know, again, you may make money with Footprint. You, you're going to make a lot more money understanding the setups, what, what the aggressive selling was. Was it aggressive selling with nothing there? Was it aggressive selling into an iceberg? That is very important important information was it aggressive selling with us was it a stop run right that that this isn't telling you any of that it's telling you there's 1100 sellers okay is that a was that a stop run and then it just turns around and does that like this is not all the information so just be careful using it is what i'm telling you if you can make money with it great more power to you um but it's not all the information <clears throat> all right that's my one rant for the day yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've I've struggled with trying to kind of you know explain that as well to 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 people. I mean, just like the context you're seeing is only one dimensional there, um, and why not be able to see like the context between you know the other side of the of the trade um, uh, and how important that is. Uh, uh, you know, a lot there's a lot of people that just swear by uh, footprint, and but I, I I don't really get it. Like if if you if you get more information. Uh, things that you cannot see, then, you, you know, are, isn't that going to be a lot more helpful? Um, uh, anyway, uh, that's, there's my rant for the day.
<laughs> All right, so we're kind of dying down here. Um, so basically, I'm just waiting for, you know, to see what happens here. If this, if I get another signal, bullish, I'll still go long. If this can move below here and we build new lugs, then I'm going to judge based on my next volume signal. And I, But I, I will be aggressive on the short side if, if we build new lugs and I get a bearish signal. If I get a bullish signal, a new one, because we already invalidated that last one I just drew, then I'm going to be aggressive out of that one. So we'll see. You just got to sit here and sometimes, you know, we're getting kind of mid-morning here. And this is what happens sometimes. So you got to, well, we're just kind of continue to dance around here, right? That's why I got that last one. I just, I don't need to see this come all the way back up to here now because nothing's going on. And, you know, this is a terrible time of day. Guys from New York start to go to lunch and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> um, but if I get a, again, going forward, if I get a, um, a bullish signal, I will be aggressive out of here. If this comes down, bust, and I get new lugs, and I get a bearish signal, I will be aggressive. So, once again, watch the video. But here's an example of what, what would happen. So, say we come back down here, boom, new lugs. Here's yellow. Actually, let's let's make the, actually, I, can, I can't do multiple colors. I was going to make it more technical. So, you had yellow there. It's not going to work, but... Um, so you had yellow here. Why can I switch to the left? And then you had red here. And then you had let's stay on there. That's interesting. And then you had blue here. Okay, well this is now we have new loves. Does it mean we're coming straight here? No, I want to see now in this area if it's able to hold this and get above here and I get a bullish signal, then we're coming to that love. If this gets below. gets below the new lug or the, the directional lug and I get a short signal then I'm playing to the other lug. Right? It's what should happen or doesn't. Or if this starts to run down here and I get a bullish signal I'm like uh oh something's wrong this should have went to like we just said for this this should go down here this would happen. But if this would have come down here and I would have seen huge buy ice I'd be like okay that because this again the real time volume is the most important. I'm like okay that's pretty much next this should not I should not be seeing a bullish setup. Now I'm ready to go long. You don't even have to go long off of this one, but the minute this gets back above this yellow, then you really know we're coming up the other way. All right, so again, it's all about what should happen, what shouldn't happen. For the ninth time, go watch that video I posted. You guys, it'll be very eye-opening, and it's very simplistic. It's not technical at all. All right, Bruce, I'm, uh, I'm out of gas. Okay, I, there is one question here, a very good question. Uh, I, I'm sorry to bypass it, uh, Stefan. Um, uh, uh, do you use relative volume by time of day to adjust your expectations if we hit one ATR or high low or surpass it? Absolutely. So I, I, I keep an eye on relative volume, and there's a whole nother, whole nother world that you can come up with the lugs and, and the volume signals if you're seeing huge volume. So, you know, markets tend to, Here's VWAP, right? Here's what they call this the daily value area. This is one standard deviation from VWAP. Here's one and a half. Here's two. Like I said, I'm just showing two. Right? Markets, when they come to these extreme standard deviations, if there's no real volume coming in, then the algos kick in and run it the other way. That's why I was saying a lot of times you could play these lugs if you don't even hear a setup. As long as there's no heavy volume, you can play it for a bounce. Right? I'm not doing that yet. I, I got enough going on with my with the setups, but you really want to pay attention to the relative volume because if there is not big size coming in, we show this all the time too. Right? Remember, this conference al will algos now... are at least 80% of the trade, maybe more, probably more. It's probably 85, 90% of the trade, right? So if you don't see, there was, there was one right here, there was one swipe of four times volume, which is a lot, right? And then you had a little bit more. But this is telling you something where, where this huge volume came in, right? and I'm sure the footprint showed big, big selling. Well, we're now, actually, it'd be nice if I showed the right market for starters. <laughs> Let's go down here. All right. So this was not as extreme, right? So you saw one little blip of volume where it was two times normal. Again, this is Sierra chart volume uh, showing me this exact five minute time period for the last 30 days. And you know, the volume is obviously more or less. So this showed me a little bit more than two times normal volume. Um, 
and now we're above there. But as you, you saw, we kept dancing here at that extreme standard deviation, the blue lug, and look at the volume just dissipate. That means there's no big money playing right now, and then the, the, the algos just turn around and run right back up everyone's unit, you know what, right? And that's exactly what happened, and that's exactly why I got out of this last one, because I can just tell, by the way, it was trading down here. There were no setups. There was no volume. Get out and just wait for another setup. Right. So yes, I absolutely look at so at, at relative volume. Um, you see, there was one blip in Nasdaq too, but I'll show you like a day where you just you want to be careful again. You know, at lugs at other areas that you're watching. If I can, what I'm doing here. Um, it's like look. Let's go back a few days here. something like this you see all this volume here right this was huge volume i think this is a uh the, this was a paul speaking i actually caught this was off of blue lug i can show you this too i actually caught this long in the room it was a, a 50 point trade i'll show you that here before we get up uh i wasn't you know i was i did see this but there was there was huge iceberg set up right here and i took it off the blue lug anyway we came down here right volume was okay and then tons of volume right here so this could you know just because the volume comes in doesn't tell you anything when it's just sitting here it's when it gets out of here is what's going to be the move right because these are huge invested traders in here big money's playing someone's buying someone's selling this is just like a setup pretend this is an iceberg right when it gets out of here that's what, what's telling you you know then that that's the go sign and you see they tried to sell tried to sell it they were trying to sell it the whole speech i'm going to show you on the lugs what it looked like and then the minute it got above this area, bye-bye, 50 points. So lugs that day, literally this was two days ago, Monday, we caught this in the room. Let's see. Um, right here. So we came down here. Paul was talking this entire time. And I was watching it, and it tried to bust blow. Now did this. I actually got short up here. There was a short signal and I gave it a shot, came down, got out the blue lug. Then I was watching and then huge bias. I think it was like 13, 1400 came in right there. Gone. Literally straight shot. I got out of some here because it did stutter at the directional and then I held the rest. There was no reason to get out. It blew right through the baby lug there. So I wasn't worried about that one. And then right there and I got out. And then I actually turned around here and I was very aggressive on the short side, so we built new lugs, right? Couldn't hold the yellow, couldn't hold the red. I should have waited for a move below the baby because it kept bouncing off the baby lug, right? So this whole area was important. I took a loss on this trade as a short, but then we had this, came, then I'm like, okay, th this is, I'm looking nothing but long. So do you see what I'm saying by what didn't happen? So because this didn't break, I, I got short, which was a good percentage trade. It should have come down here. That didn't happen. We got back above this yellow. I'm like, okay, now any signal I get, I'm going long aggressively. What do we do? Came up here. This was an 1100 lot sell stop run right off the yellow lug. The minute that got back above there, uh, three quarters of an ATR, I got long and I caught it all the way up to the red lug. So hopefully you guys are seeing, again, watch the video, but you're seeing what didn't happen signals the next big move the other way, especially 100% when you get your volume signal. So I got the volume signal here, and I got it here, and I caught both of these trades. <coughs> All right, Bruce. Any other questions? Out of gas, out of voice. No, no, sir. Uh, uh, excellent. Oh, I do have I do have one more comment. I just wanted to make um, something kind of um, a kind of big elephant in the room here. Um, uh, you mentioned it uh, multiple times, uh, but I just want to reiterate it, like. Um, and it, it and then it, it fits in with what you've been talking about for many many months, uh, is today or when it's moving on these days, and uh, you know you should be plowing into it and scaling into it and making it a month uh, uh, making day uh, or you know year, uh, uh, and uh, uh, take all these little you know you continue to trade. Uh, and but you take the small losses, the small gains, etc. Uh, but then when you hit one out of the park, you really hit it out of the park. I mean, this is trading. Uh, That's and, trading. Yeah. Right. 
talk about it every webinar, guys think, especially newbies, think they're going to come in here and generate a consistent profit every day. It's not going to happen. It's just not. It's just the nature of the markets. It does. This is not a consistent income. So you do your best to control your risk, not get crushed, not over trade, not trade too big. And you make a little, you lose a little. You make a little more, you lose a little. Make a little, lose a little. And then you catch a day like today and you make your month. And by the end of the year, after a year's time, you'll have four, five, six days that are just monstrous. And that's going to make up the bulk of your P&L. And that's what trading is. And anybody who tells you differently is lying to you. Anyone's telling you they're 90% and they 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 make, uh, you know, they have a, they're 90% and 90% of the days they make money, they're lying to you, period. End of story. They, they may be able to do it for a week, maybe a month, I highly doubt a month, but it's just, it's nonsense. Trust me, if, if it was able, if you're able to do it, I'd be doing it. <laughs> it's just not possible. You know, I did do that back in the day but that was a whole different time period. And that's when I was flipping, flipping the market and, you know, I was spoofing and everything else. That's when I was legal. Right. And so, you know, it, it was possible for me to generate, you know, money every day. Like for instance, 2003, I made 10 million bucks. You got to average $50,000 a day, every single trading day to average 10 million bucks. And I pretty much did that. I mean, granted I had bad days, but the majority of the time I was making money. Right. That just doesn't exist anymore, guys, especially for a click trader. If you're able to make some algos and you're, you're really tight with them and you have no input in the decision making once you let it run, then, yeah, you possibly can be consistent because you're not screwed. The, the human element is not screwing up trades. But if you're a human and you're clicking, you are not going to make a consistent income every day. It's not going to happen. So get that out of your head and try to catch the major moves and add and understand what I'm teaching you. Come to my trade room, get the course, understand how to play the setups. Once you understand that, then you can start to incorporate whatever else that you look at or the lugs. Obviously, I highly recommend the lugs. And then you're off to the races. And then you catch an awesome day like today where you kill it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just such an important uh, uh, point to make. So I, I know you're out of gas, uh, Scott, but <laughs> but it's just, uh, it, you know, because it, it, it freaks you out when you make like 15 grand one day uh, where like, you know, the majority of the days, like you you know, make like a couple thousand, you lose a couple thousand, whatever. Um, and, uh, it, it, you know, it's just something that traders got to get over uh, and got to understand it and, and also not get freaked out by the numbers. Right. Well, that's the whole point. Like guys are over trading and they can't, they stare at their P&L and they can't right. make... I mean, this was a perfect example. So if you, one, if you overtraded up here or you're looking at your P&L and you, you thought you had it, you're like, Scott says we're coming to the blue. Oh, no. Well, you just saw your P&L tick, tick down a thousand bucks from where you were. You're like, oh, no. Or maybe you held that one and then this one. And then this one, you're like, I, I, can't, I can't take it. I, 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 I don't want to lose. I, I think we're going to do this. I, I got to get out. Right? Because you're staring at your P&L instead of just trading trading and understanding what you should see and you're not looking at your PL. Trust me, I say I've said this many, many times too. When I finally took off as a trader, when I started making millions of dollars, I used to have my PL right here, right in my face. And I can just see it ticking up, up ten thousand, down ten thousand, up five thousand, whatever. Right. And then the minute I turn this off, I, I'm a I'm a Star Wars nerd because that's when I grew up. You know, seventy seven was when I was five. So I called this when I finally turned this off. So if you remember Star Wars, the original Star Wars he was about to blow up the Death Star, and uh, Ben comes through in the in the force and tells him to turn off. Basically, uses use the force. So I, I I said, you know what? I'm turning off the targeting computer. I'm not using that. I'm just going to trade what I see. And you would be you will be absolutely amazed how well you'll do. Right? Again, you got to have stop limits in with your broker, and we talk about this all the time. I'm not going to get into that, but. You'll be amazed if you just trade, you trade, trade. You have a good idea right away, right? So say you shorted up here, you're like, okay, yeah, I know I'm up money here. And then you shorted here, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm up money here. And then maybe you shorted on another side. Eventually you lose track. And then by the end of the day, when you look at that thing, you will be like, oh my God, I just had my best day ever. And you didn't even know it because you did, You weren't looking, you weren't paying attention to your P&L. You are paying attention to just trading properly. And you got try it one day. A couple days, you will be absolutely amazed. You will bring up your P and L at the end of the day. Force yourself not to look at it. Put tape. Some day I used to put tape over the screen. Whatever you need to do, and just don't look at it, and just trade. 
you know, when, if, you, if you know what you're doing and you have a system, obviously, not just throwing in orders, you'll pull, you'll bring up that thing and I guarantee it's probably your best day ever, if not close. So that's, that's. You know, yeah. And like then don't that. give it back the rest of the month, you know? <laughs> All um, right, well, that, see, now, you, now you, Bruce, now you're getting me going again. <laughs> the, other, the other big thing is if you are killing it and you are seeing things and everything's working and you hit your daily profit level, which is the biggest bunch of bullshit I've ever heard in my life. Part of my language is all upset I get about this. If you are a trader that hits a certain amount and turns off your screen, you, you're done. Just send me your PayPal me your cash because you're eventually going to lose all your money. Okay. That is the dumbest thing you can ever do. If you are seeing things clearly, you don't get up from the screen. I can't tell you, I, here we go with the rant. When, when I started at King Street Trading, when I first started, I would say three quarters of the guys in there, they get up five grand and they would they turn off their machine and they go sit in the game room and play ping pong. And we had like the stand up video game. That's what they would do. And I was sitting there like, wait a minute, you just made five grand. It's 945. Why aren't you sitting there? And you're obviously things are clicking. Why aren't you sitting there and make another five grand? Make another five grand. Like, what are you, what are you doing? And guess what? All those guys, those were the first guys booted out of the firm. When they started losing, they, they blew out because they couldn't, they didn't have the huge days. They quit when they were up five grand, and then they started having five grand losing days, five grand, 10 grand losing days. It makes no sense. There's other times where, like Monday, ask my room, actually it was yesterday. I, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Um, things just were, it was choppy, it was low volume, it, things were not making sense. You're gonna have days like that. That's when you turn off your computer. And you say, you know, you hit your limit for the day. I'm done. There's always another day. So on that last point, it doesn't mean. So say you go up five grand, right? Whatever, whatever your amount is that you that you normally would turn off your computer like an idiot and, and not take advantage of when you're seeing things clearly. There's nothing wrong with saying, okay, if I give back thirty percent, twenty whatever percentage you want. So I'm up five. If I give back twenty percent, if I lose a thousand dollars back, then I'm done for the day. I'm perfectly fine with that, right? Because you had a losing trade, something changed, you didn't see something clearly, fine, and then you're done. You're not done when you make five grand, make 10, make 20, make 50, make 100. Like that's, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Just like when guys use stops and trailing stops that have nothing to do with structure that only have to do with, because you don't want to lose money back. So I, I can go down this rabbit hole for the next hour. So you guys have all heard it before if you've been on the webinars. But I, I mean, sorry to uh, solicit the the rant, but uh, it was well worth it. <laughs> it was well worth it because it really is an important part, um, uh, and so important. And uh, uh, you know, here's a winning day, and uh, uh, you know, uh, to have the expectations that there are going to be winning days like this that just you knock it out of the park. I mean, like you said, this should be like three times more. Uh, in terms of PNL, but like uh, I just, it's just hard on the webinars. It, it is bouncing between markets, and then yeah. you know it's like I, I lose, I lose my thought or I'm adding. Right. So it's you know it is what it is. It's still a good day, but you, I showed you where you can been adding, 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 and this could be a monster day. Right. Um, so as far as that, before we pop off, you know, this did get an ATR below there, but it did get above, and you could have just said, you know what, screw it, I'm getting long, and you got 50 points in your pocket, right? Again, this, this this is the science, the setups, how you trade them are different. You may say, you know what, Scott, I don't care that we went an ATR below here and it barely went an ATR below here. It wasn't, wasn't like it went, you know, very far below here. It was, all, it was just over an ATR, right? For me, uh, that negates this as a bullish setup. For you, you may say, you know what, we're still at the blue lug. We didn't, we didn't draw new lugs. We get above here. I'm giving this a shot. I'm just going to risk just below the zone. And you caught, now you're, you got 50 points the other way. All right, guys, so hopefully this is informative. Bruce, did you tape this, by the way? Or is it, are, are these being recorded or no? Yeah. Oh, cool. If you can send me that, because I, I think I'm going to post this one. I think this was a good one as far as not only trading. It's not about the you know the profit. It's about a lot of lessons in this. In this, You guys serve yourself well to go back and watch this video. Yeah, I'll, I'll post it on our selected webinars. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, worst case scenario, go to Ludwig Levels, try them out for this free trial for three days. Try them out and see what, watch the video, try them out. You guys will be blown away, I can promise you. you know, remember, that video was made last May. <laughs>
and it's still everything is still exactly like we talked about. It's it's pretty unbelievable, to tell you the truth. All right, guys. All right, thanks, I Scott. Will, uh, uh, excellent, excellent webinar, and uh, we will uh, uh, see you next next Thursday. Cool, appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Bye bye. Bye.